What's going on guys? Rhyme on my teacher in the house and I'm here with the ADL Little Cup Draft Tourney Final Game Number 2. Here of course with Axo. Say hi man. Oh hello everyone. It's uh, Axo. Uh, this game proves to be a rather fun match to uh, commentate over I think it's fair to say. Mm. Uh, especially of this series this was probably the best match we ever played. So let's start rolling the clip. So we dialed back the same leads as game 1. Don't think this is any surprise to anybody here. Um, at this point, Trading Rock seems the most obvious play. Uh, we almost did it turn one last time. But if I remember correctly, it didn't actually happen that way. Uh, I think we both had ideas of doing some shenanigans here. Uh, I definitely remember seeing you hover Stealth Rock, though. Uh, <laughs> yes. I certainly was hovering it for quite a while. I think I kept clicking between two different moves. That I wasn't too sure if I wanted to reveal one of them or not. Hmm. Um, especially as I know that that move caught you completely off guard um, when you actually saw it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> which was definitely funny to me. Uh, but yeah, like I could easily just have gone for the same Skull Strat and Fish for the Burn. Obviously, I didn't get it in game one in two attempts. Um, which means, you know, third time's a charm, right? But yeah, that doesn't quite work that way. Um... Oh yeah, this was the point when Shadow was like, imagine me called Mini Defogger just to juke you because he's not running Defog. Because at this point you still don't know what my my third and fourth move are. You only had two moves here, which was uh, Rocks and Skull. These were the only I two. I thought you had Ice Beam, but other than that, I was like, I don't know, maybe D if Defog's the only thing that makes sense. I don't know, and then. Yeah, so you actually pulled shenanigans on me as you actually switched in Machop, and I went for Signal Beam here, which is a very unusual tech to run on it. But the reason behind actually running Signal Beam here is to make sure that I'm not walled by Slowpoke. Right, because Slowpoke getting a grass type move like uh, Grass Knot can hit purple up a little bit, does also get electric moves. Uh, so I didn't want to be walled by Slowpoke. So Signal Beam was actually there. So my plan there was actually to break your sturdy from Onyx. Uh, much like your little quick attack play on my Magnemite from previous game. Um, but yeah. As we do eventually pick up rocks as you knock off my Violite like a meanie. Um, I'm not surprised to see the knockoff. Um, it makes a hell of a lot of sense. Get rid of as many items as possible. Uh, but even without my Violites, I'm actually still relatively good here. Um, but I think I made the easy play here. There's a couple of plays, obviously, you can make. Uh, I believe I've already seen the Ice Punch, so but I use not as easy a switch in as possible. Uh, obviously, thing, even things like close combat just hits hard. Yeah, so um, I totally predicted that Signal Beam, by the way, and that's why I went into the <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, you absolutely predicted it, because your face is actually on the screen, and they saw the reaction as, as you were literally like, as he goes for Signal Beam? <laughs> no, that wasn't me. That wasn't look, me. I looks know. down at his phone and be like, "Oh, better note that one down." What the fuck's we're gonna be doing? <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, dear. I'm really not surprised though. But as of course the same from last game, both of us took quite a lot of time on our plays, uh, which definitely makes a lot of sense, uh, given the fact that this is a very close match. Uh, obviously, this match took some time, and I can definitely see a lot of your thought processes coming through here. Um, as you're still talking about your own move choices, um, as well as thinking about what I might do. Yeah. Uh, it's really hard though, because I can. I mean, obviously, if I went for Scold here and tried to play around the burn, then that would have been annoying, because I would have been like, haha, O burns for three Scolds, but obviously it's just not worth the risk. So if people are looking at this situation and they know that Botchop has guts, uh, we saw it in game one, so definitely pay attention to that. Um, don't click Skull here. I know a lot of people would have clicked Skull here just to try and get damage off. It actually does quite a bit to my job, even if it's a Violate. So it does actually cause a few interesting situations. Uh, but uh, my actual switch is here. If I was not really fearing Bullet Punch, I could go Abra, but it's not worth it. Um, even things like Litten predicting an Ice Punch isn't so bad. Um, as I'm pretty sure you don't have a ground type move on this Machop at this point. Uh, I think I count. Or I think we saw most of your set. Because we definitely saw a knockoff bullet punch. And I think we saw close combat in game one. So we only had one move that I didn't know. Um, but at this time I was just like, it's probably not. 
anything relevant for me that I should be worried about. I don't know if I should close comp. I think that that may have been either this one or three on the third one. Uh, either but... that or I inferred that it was a fighting type move and I just put close combat in my notes. Because I had it in yeah. my notes at this point. Um, or, no, I had Drain Punch in my notes, but I didn't remember if my job even got Drain Punch. I think it does, but uh, I didn't remember. But I put, I think I just put Fighting Move. Because I saw ah, Knock okay. Off, Bullet Punch, Ice Punch. Uh, we saw those before. Uh, obviously, Ice Punch was prepped for Jatini, which was kind of an inferred move on my end anyway. Uh, but I think I actually saw it anyway. So, uh, we kind of knew a little bit of information on these sets. Obviously, you only knew two of my Piblops moves, uh, which is kind of interesting. Uh, but yeah, this play took a lot of time for both of us here, um, because I wasn't sure what I wanted to switch in, um, or if I indeed even wanted to switch. Uh, that was one of my main concerns. Uh, right. obviously I can't go Magnemite because I just end up rocking my Sturdy Buried use, of course. Um, and here it's not an easy situation for you either, but knockoff just seems relatively safe. Because if you can get rid of something else's item... You're in a fairly solid spot here if I lose two items for basically nothing. Yeah, I, I agree. But Ooh. I ended up making the safe play here, in my opinion. Go for Star Wars. We do see the close combat, which doesn't do a lot, uh, unsurprisingly. I'm a fairy type and you're minus one. Um, it's definitely worth the switch for me. Uh, now you know I have Play Rough, so that's one of the things that obviously means you can't stay in here because Play Rough actually just kills you even for a Violet at this point. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't remember your switching, honestly. I think it might have been Vulpix, which is your normal switch into this thing, really. Because uh, you want to hit this thing on the special side. Uh, Snowball is unfortunately not that specially bulky. Especially not compared to the physical bulk it has. Yeah, true. Um, honestly, I, I think I either switched into Slowpoke or Vulpix, like you said, yeah. Yeah, I feel like Vulpix is always your better switch in here, because you can either, you know, I mean, it does take Rock's damage, of course, it does take the player off damage, um, but getting the Sun up means your Bowsprout can come in and guarantee outspeed Snubble, um, which obviously Sludge Bomb just ruins uh, Snubble at this point, because I still haven't lost my Berry Juice yet, so that's something to bear in mind. I'm not a Violet, so uh, that's always the problem, uh, especially yeah. when you're dealing with Snubble. Well, uh, you actually went into Onyx, which was interesting. So I actually doubled oh. out into Body. This was kind of a very aggressive play on my end. Um, I actually predicted a switch, but I predicted Slowpoke. So I went into Body because uh, I felt like at the time, I had to kind of guess myself if you had um, a move that would hit Body pretty hard. Because this Body is actually quite specially bulky. So I wasn't too concerned about like taking one Ice Beam. Uh, I take an Ice Beam pretty easily, but I don't take Psychic. And at this point, I didn't know you had if you had or hadn't had Psychic. Uh, I did see Scold on it before. Uh, oh, no, Surf, rather, not Scold. But surprisingly, you let me kill the Onyx uh, just for rocks, which I was interested in. Uh, but it's not too surprising I Giga Drain. Now, this does give you free Vulpix. As expected, I mean, I, really. I wanted to break the, the Mag's you know, sturdy as well as break or do a lot of damage to the Linden. So I was like, eh, it's worth it. And uh, I, it's not, as we will find it's out. It's really not, because at the end of the day, like, getting free damage on Vulpix is great for me, because it cripples its number of switch ins. Uh, and this was one of the perils of not running Defog on your Volumi, which was your only hazard removal on this team, because you didn't bring Fletchling. Um, and it does cause you a lot of issues. So I actually made the aggressive switch into the. the uh, snubble, and unfortunately I got crit. Now the crit didn't matter, I ran the calc, um, overheat was a very high chance to kill me anyway. It was a roll, but a very, um, slim roll. Like, it was well... very slim in my favor. Uh, so, <laughs> there was no way I was realistically living that hit. Uh, while losing snubble sucks, because snubble is my best volume answer, uh, it's not terrible for me. Um, uh, I can force decisions anyway, because right now I can just go Abra at this point. Um, as at this point you still weren't even sure you were still doubting yourself but my Abra was scarfed even though you knew your Volpix was scarfed it had to be okay even though it, it had, wasn't, to, be, it had yeah, to be yeah but you were still doubting yourself all the time and I remember seeing this uh, when I was looking at this again uh, I remember watching yeah. it back and obviously 
we talked about it briefly in the end game chat as well. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> I find it interesting, actually, of course, uh, while we're looking at it, on the left side of my screen there, where your chat is, uh, where a couple of your viewers are talking about switching Pokemon. I do actually just want to talk about this while we're in the pause. Sometimes switching Pokemon is not a waste of a turn, okay? It might seem like it, but if you can read what your opponent's switching into, and you can switch in a counter, you're actually gaining momentum. This is often why core strategies like Volt Turn is so effective. Because you can use the U-turn or the Vol Switch to pivot into a better option than what you already have on the field. So while it is kind of an unusual way to play, because you're not directly damaging your opponent, by getting Switch Initiative, you're forcing your opponent to Switch. So while it is potentially a waste of a turn if you get it wrong, which does happen a couple of times in this series, it can actually be incredibly effective. And there is one occasion where I actually pull off a very strong series of switches which gained me so much momentum. And that was actually coming in game 3, which we'll talk about when we get there. But that was a really fascinating turn. So yeah, for those who are watching that are perhaps not experienced competitive battlers, don't worry so much about switching. Okay, It, it is something to talk about, I think. Uh, particularly the more mechanically competitive players, they use switches incredibly effectively. Yeah, I think that's actually what I was uh, what I was talking about on stream as well. That switching is almost never a waste of a turn. Like if you're versing a water type and a fire type, and you're with a fire type coming, like you need to switch into something that either resists or counters it. So yeah, absolutely. Switch initiative is a very important mechanic to think about. So as expected, of course, I go straight into Abra. This always forces decisions, um, and at this range, Psychic actually kills Vulpix, which is something that you can't afford. Because obviously this is your main Sunsetter, and given the fact your only other Sunsetter is also weak to rocks, you, you want to keep this thing around. And plus, you're at half special attack right now, you're minus two, so at this point, there's no point keeping this Vulpix in. Uh, at this point, I didn't even consider Scarf, um, I'm not going to lie, because obviously I naturally outspeed Vulpix with Abra anyway. Uh, so even though I knew I was Scarfed, uh, I was just like, well, you could well be a Violite still. At this point, I hadn't even considered Scarf Ulpix, and I didn't even, at this point, know that you were Scarf Ulpix until we talked about it after Game 3. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I had to play around the information that it could be a Violite, but even if you were a Violite, you don't live the Psychic. Uh, so, this was kind of an interesting position. And I said about this in Game 1, but every time Abra comes out, it always forces a decision. Um, and that's always a horrible situation to be in when you've got to guess um, what you can switch into without me predicting you. Yeah. Um, yeah, at this point, there was no really safe switching because, uh, well, I, I, just, I kept thinking that you were uh, you were Sash. I was like, well, he's going to live any attack anyways, so I'm going to lose him on here. Well, yeah, because um, obviously Shadow Ball does a lot to the Slowpoke. Psychic kills the Bellsprout and the Machop, and Dazzling Gleam hits the Vullaby. So at this point, yeah. you've got to guess which one I'm going to click. Um, and yeah. I've obviously got to figure out what you're going to go into. Um, honestly, looking at this position, I feel like Slowpoke is your best switch. Because Slowpoke is the bulkiest of all of your mons. Um, and honestly, like Psychic doesn't really touch Slowpoke. Dazzling Game tickles it a little bit. Uh, the only move that hits it is Shadow Ball. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's something to bear in mind. Obviously, Dazzling Gleam ruins Machop and Volaby. Psychic ruins Machop and Bellsprout. So, <coughs> excuse me. So the only thing you could possibly risk is um, if I went for Psychic, predicting that that would hit the most, and you just went straight into Volaby, which would be an advantageous turn for you. But obviously, it wouldn't matter because I can just switch straight out anyway at this point. Yeah, I was in a I was in a scary situation because. Yeah, I can really switch and be safe, so... And this is one of the good things about the way I played the series in general. Um, even in Game 1, I had very good positions where I had a lot of these situations with you. Which is why we took a lot of time over our plays. Because we had to really think about which decision we could make. Because I had to make a decision as well, really. It was, which one do I click? Because if I guess wrong, I do minimal damage and I have to switch out anyway. But in any yeah. situation here... Aside from Psychic and Devolaby, I pretty much lose nothing by just clicking a move here. Um, and that's the only situation that you've got to face. 
which is why obviously the audio is muted from the video but we can definitely see you talking through a lot of your decisions here and what you can switch into and it is kind of causing a problem uh, the... <laughs> yeah <laughs> which is the whole thing with Abra in this matchup to be honest um, Abra, was Abra just itself is so good in LC yeah. there was a reason why it was tested to be in the band league um, obviously it's incredibly strong in even open little cup format not just the limited draft that we had so right uh, it is a very, very potent mod. I was surprised that it wasn't in the top tier, honestly. But I was happy that it wasn't in the top tier. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was quite happy to see it in 19 instead of 20 points. Uh, yeah, it was it was weird. But, yeah, honestly, um, I've, I've even seen Abra used in stuff like ZU. Even though Kadabra's down there, people sometimes use Abra. I don't know why, but... I'm not sure either. Oh. I don't actually remember what you were talking about here. Oh, I think you were looking at the tier lists. Oh, yeah. Yeah, just to I see what's yeah. there. And it, just to show it here for you guys here. Like, when you're seeing things like Ghastly and Mianfu in the 18 points instead of the top tier, and like Staryu Magnemite, which are two mons that are exceptionally good in Little Cup, not in the higher tiers, or like their 18, 17 points, which is high, but not at the same level as Abra, it's really surprising. But that's what makes this so interesting is sometimes the way people tear this can really create some interesting drafts. And I think both of us had the two best drafts by a mile in this particular tournament. Uh, so it wasn't a surprise to see us both in the final. But it was still still difficult to draft a good team. Uh, I was surprised I managed to draft it. Bear in mind, I drafted eight Pokemon, right? And you drafted seven, so... Yeah, I tried to draft eight, but there wasn't good fightings down there besides Machop, so I was like, all right, I'll just I'll take this. <laughs> yeah, whereas I was just like, what can I find on a budget? Like, Litten was only like seven points. I'm just like, sure. So I actually predict you here. I actually went for Shadow Ball, uh, which was a good predict on my end. Um, you were put in a difficult position there. Uh, but I said it before. I felt like Slowpoke was by far your best switcher. Um... Uh, but yeah, it was just a horrible situation for you to be in. Now at this point, even if you just went Volley on my chop, it didn't really matter, right? Uh, you could go either of them. I would have to switch out if you went my chop because I'm locked into Shadow Ball at this point. Uh, and I've got, I've still got switch ins to my chop. I can just go lit in here, get the Intimidate off. Um, I can even go Purple up still, uh, which is obviously the other thing to go in mind. I can even go Budu really, because Budu takes pretty much everything except an Ice Sponge. It can take a knockoff relatively well. As we do see the Machop, of course. Uh, at this point, you're still thinking on Sash, which is kind of funny. Uh, I do I do specifically remember you actually talking about that here. Uh, is it this I was point? like, if he switches on my Bullet Punch, he has to be Sash. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I did laugh when I watched it back. I, did, <laughs> I was laughing to myself at this point. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I'm really not surprised. But yeah, like the only hard thing for me here was that my snubble was gone. Um, but nonetheless, the reason I brought Intimidate Core was to hit these physical mons down. Uh, especially the Volibear of course, for Brave Bird. So as you can see, I do go into Yumi. Shoutouts to all my only good legends fans I watch my videos. And a bullet punch does nothing. <laughs> because you're minus one on number fire type. Uh, <laughs> oh dear. Now, this was always the hard part for me, because I seem to remember at this point, I think you said I was going to click Fake Out consistently. Obviously, the reason I can't click Fake Out is because of that Volaby. Uh, Volaby is still alive, which means a Fake Out's not a thing. Um, so, that's one of the hard situations for me. Now, at this point, if you stayed in, you had a Rock or Ground type move. Uh, but I, I'm pretty sure I figured you didn't have it at this point, because you would have clicked it before. Because I brought Litten in, in against Machop in game 1 as well, and he didn't click it then. Mm -hmm. So at this point, I was suspecting that something was up. Uh, but at this point, like, what do you really switch in? Because even Volpix doesn't necessarily take hits that well. Uh, if I, I think remember I... right, I think I might have predicted you to go Volibee and then switched again. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, but yeah, this was definitely a hard decision though. Uh, but Volibee just seems like such an easy switch all the time here. Uh, I still have Bardew, of course, that I can sack off if I need it. Uh, well, I can even just go straight back into Abra, which would catch you out as well. Um, yeah, that's true. 
I don't remember what you did actually. I can't remember either. This was a, this was a while ago. This was about a week ago we played these matches now. But yeah. I'm still exhausted from them, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> oh yeah, dear. I'm still very much exhausted from those. Uh, I've so got it, I don't have to play. The... I got it, I don't play you in the RU league, but I <laughs> would expect to lose that anyway, honestly. Yeah, I mean, I did have Entei, which, yeah, beat your team. Yeah, well, oh yeah, it absolutely murdered my team. Uh, <laughs> pretty much anything that was good murdered my team, to be fair. Uh, any, 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 like, S tier mod just <laughs> destroyed your team. There was just nothing in my team that was good except Darm and Zydalgo. Uh, but yeah, and we're not talking about that. But yeah, we're obviously still both taking a lot of time here. Um, obviously, while I have the mod advantage, I'm 5-4 up. I also have a solid enough position here. Uh, the position is still precarious. Like, one false switch or one bad play can still definitely swing this the other way. Um, but at this point, I was starting to feel a little comfortable. I actually went straight back into Abra. I actually he wondered if you would go Volubi. Uh, but I went back into Abra even just guessing on Volpix as well. Uh, but yeah, at this point, it's like... You still gotta decide whether I'm Scarf or not. Um, you still kept second guessing yourself on that. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty yeah. sure I just went Mag Air to be honest. Um, or I just went Perk Club because I didn't feel like I needed Perk Club anymore. Yeah, that would make sense. Uh, but yeah, like Mag makes a lot of sense here as well because the easy switch in obviously it would be Mag because it takes little damage from anything. Because um, because uh, I still hadn't seen it the last move on this. I'm pretty sure I only saw Knock Off and Sunny Day on this thing at this point. Um, I think I originally guessed... Oh, no, I saw Sunny Day as well. So I saw, like, Knock Off, yeah. Sunny Day. And then, like, Roost and one other move. Which I, which I assumed was either Brave Bird or Defog. Uh, most likely Defog would have made a lot more sense. Uh, but, yeah... We obviously later find out you did actually have one other move, which did actually just pop up on the screen there. Uh, it did actually seal hover for U-turn, uh, which was interesting because it meant you didn't have um, defog at all, which caught me off guard. Um, <laughs> I like that someone in the chat says, "Did someone say panic?" Uh, I I remember watching this video back actually when I was watching the stream, uh, <laughs> where you were like, "I'm not gonna panic. I'm not gonna panic. Honest, I promise." And then I just start panicking. <laughs> and then you've just gotten nervous. Which is unsu which is not surprising. This match is so strong. It's a difficult match. You know, I'd be nervous as well. I was nervous as well. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, it was definitely difficult. Uh, oh, you know what would be funny? If instead of Abra you brought Dragonite to just show me your Dragon oh, Fairy Steel and then fire what a grass core. <laughs> my I nearly had it. On my team originally I had Dratini on it. Um I had it on in place of Snubble, and then I realized actually Snubble is really good against Machop and uh, Volumi. Yeah. So I did see the U-turn of course, uh, which was a good play, uh, definitely a good play if you thought I was going to switch out, which would make sense, yeah. Abra against Volumi is not a great matchup. Um, Even if you it, didn't, um, I think I counted and it was like a 50% chance that I lived, so I was like, eh, might as oh, well try yeah. If you were a uh, better juice, you would have died, but if I like, yeah. you would have lived. Yeah. Uh, because um, if you're a Violet, Dazzling Gleam does like 60% max. So. So at this point, I'd actually count that at the time. So I switched out knowing that. Uh, when I did you switch into it, into Lin? Um, I think I predicted you to switch back out. Um, because I at the time I forgot you were a Violet. So I was like, okay, so if you're switching out. Uh, I'm gonna switch out as well to make sure I get the initiative on you. Because um, I originally thought Volpix was coming in. So I went Litten, predicting the Volpix to come in. Because Volpix doesn't really touch Litten all that much. Um, so I was like, okay, well, Litten makes the most sense here to go into. Plus, Litten yeah. really can hit a lot of your team. The only thing it doesn't hit is the Volibee. Um And obviously, now I saw the U turn out. It meant made it even easier for me. Obviously, I took the rocks damage, which kind of sucks because I didn't have any recovery. Uh, but honestly, like rocks against my team, except for Mag, 
Rox isn't that great, to be honest, so I wasn't that concerned. Um, Litten was only really here just to take a fire hit. Um, and obviously get a couple of Intimidates off. So yeah, that was kind of my thought process here. Uh, it does have a U-turn though, so I could pivot away. You didn't see the U-turn in game one, so you didn't know if I had it. Um, you only saw Fake Out Flame Charge before you killed my little, uh, before you killed my little. I still, re I really thought that you were gonna bring swords there. So I actually made a very aggressive play here, um, knowing that Volibee could have switched in. I went for Fake Out anyway, because um, I figured you probably would go for Fire Move. Um, so it kind of surprised me to see you stay in. I thought literally it was a free switch, but I was just like, you know what, bite the bullet. I can still deal with, um, I can still deal with Volibee anyway, because I can, I've still got Piplup alive to get rid of rocks. Oh, obviously you still don't know that I'm deep on yet. Um, that's the other thing. Uh, but yeah, at this point I was just like, my Litten doesn't really do much anymore, so I can either you turn out on the off chance that you switch, um, or I just click flame charge, I think. Because Linton really doesn't do much here. Uh, obviously, it would be nice, of course, to keep it around. Just so Volpix doesn't have an easy time. But, yeah. But I actually made the aggressive switch. I went straight into Piplup, predicting the fire move. Because I knew I lived it. Because, obviously, I'm still a Violite. So, at the end of the day... They, oh, no, I wasn't actually a Violite at this point. It was not gone. Um, yeah. But I knew I lived the fire hit anyway. At this point. I actually expected an overheat. Um, which actually would have killed me. Um, but this was an aggressive play regardless, honestly. Probably too aggressive. This was probably my misplay of the game in a way. Maybe. I don't know. I didn't really see what else I would have switched into there, taking the fire move. Unless I just, like, sacked off Buddy. Which could have been my play, I guess. But see, hey, yeah. you're still guessing what my moves that is. At this point, at this point, I remember this actually. You were debating if I had Aqua Jet or not. That's what you yeah. were debating. If I had Aqua Jet, which would have done about five to ten percent all picks in Sun, <laughs> it would literally but, have done nothing. But it would but have meant that, that you couldn't switch back in enough. in rocks. Yeah. So that was the would have been the only thing that it would have been. Um, but yeah, this kind of forced you into a little bit of a mini decision. Um, you still could pick your move. So it didn't really matter too much because I faked out the last turn. I feel like if I U-turned last turn instead of faked out, then I would have seen what you locked into. Well, I well, yeah, I just used flamethrower. So. Oh yeah, that's true. Well, at this point, sacking off my piplup made the most sense. I didn't want anything else to take a flamethrower. Uh, so I just go back into Abra. I can just do this every single time Volpix is in, and I can switch <laughs> in like every single time. Abra just comes in, and now we're playing a prediction game again. Now Dazzling Gleam is like free. Dazzling Gleam feels pretty free. Psychic is relatively free still as well, because Volibee is the only thing that doesn't take it. Or it takes it pretty comfortably, because obviously it's immune. But like, Psychic hits three out of the four of your mods. Right? And Dazzling Gleam hits two out I still feel like Dazzling Gleam would be better. Oh, Dazzling Gleam's 100% better, in a way. Um, I'm sure you didn't notice my resident sleeper name. I thought it was quite funny. Oh, I definitely did. <laughs> that was definitely funny to me. Uh, yeah. yeah. I did like the looks like you're overheated. That was pretty glowing. Uh, <laughs> I didn't even think about overheat, which was the funny part. Well, yeah, overheat does knock out all of your mons. Um, practically at full besides like Litten, I think. So. Yeah, it, it barely does anything to Litten. Um, <laughs> Because of the spread I had on Litten, it does like 50 something percent max. Hmm. Uh, which was kind of cool for me. I liked having that option. Which is why I felt like Litten was better than Dratini, honestly. Because Dratini was too much of an risk. Uh, as I said it in the game one as well, like I would have to set up two Dragon Dances realistically to be good enough to beat half of your team. Especially if you're just running a bunch of Avilites, which I kind of expected because it's Little Cup. Well, we did yeah. see the Volibee here, and I did actually go for Dazzling Gleam. I semi-predicted it, and you lived. Uh, this was actually a mineral, uh, near enough. It was close to a mineral, and it was a low roll. Uh, it wasn't quite minimal. Which was really unfortunate, of course. <laughs> but at this point, you have pretty much have to sack Volibee, because you can't bring it back in. Um, and my Abra outspeeds. Uh, so, 
That's something to bear in mind. Uh, the other option here is just to risk going to Bellsprout. Uh, if you still think I'm Sash. Uh, which is this... I think at this point you, you said I hit it well. Or something like that. Was it here? Or was it when you sacked off the Vulpix? I can't remember. But yeah, it was, a, uh, it was a hard position for you at this point. But yeah, I'm hmm. pretty sure at this point you just gave me Volibee because there's not really any reason to switch out here. Right. So why would you switch out? What would you switch into? Like, Machop's probably your only realistic switch, but Machop's not taking a Dazzling Link. Bellsprout can tank it, but I don't know if you're, you know, Scarf or not. I'm still... Yeah. And at this point, I'm just like, this is free kill. There's no reason to keep it in. And this surprised me to see this come out. But at the same time, it didn't, because you need Sun up. Like, Sun was your only way to win, and now volubi has gone. This was your play. But at this point, I'm pretty sure this was where I gave away that I was scarfed completely. Obviously, I gave it away in turn one as well, or game one as well, and that didn't come up. And obviously, that escaped your memory. But yeah, at this point, this is gone. And I'm pretty sure I remember we were laughing in chat about this. Because you were like, oh, you hit that well. Uh, yeah, I can and see you typing like, it now. And I just thought I said, but Abra yeah. outspeeds naturally. <laughs> and I was like, oh, yeah, I, I totally forgot. Oops. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was pretty funny. I'm not going to lie. But yeah, at this point, like I can sack Letton off here. Uh, I can even sack Buddy off here. Uh, and at this so point, so now I definitely knew that you were uh, you were Scarf. So yeah, so at this point, like I can freely sack him on and then just switch back into Abra and go for Psycho. Um, obviously, that is easily the best play here uh, because I know Abra wins in general. Abra beats both Bowser and Machop because it just got Psycho and kills them both. Uh, and I was in this position, I was just like, yeah, this match is mine. So this was a pretty easy win for me uh, in the long run. So at this point, it's just like, who do I sack off? Who do I want to die? Uh, <laughs> which was kind if of a I hard decision predict... for me. The only thing is, like, if I did predict you to switch into, like, certain mons, um, I could have still won, because it's still four turns up. So if... Because you didn't know I had Sucker Punch at this point. No. Um... I still could have won. Yeah, I was hoping to save that tech for a little bit later, but yeah, it's really not a surprise. I didn't even know it got Sucker Punch. Uh, I didn't even think about it. Uh, but yeah, like at this point, I was like, I can do one of two things. Uh, I can either just click Psycho, or I have to switch because I'm locked into Dazzling Name regardless. So at this point, it's like, who do I switch? Do I switch Litten or do I switch Buddy? Um, obviously, I knew it was Special Attack, so it didn't make too much odds which one I picked. Uh, but it was just a question of did I want to go for the switch or did I want to predict you to go for like solar beam and then just go mag but yeah Litten is the obvious switch not really too complicated here uh, weather ball does actually kill me uh, that was actually believe it or not a roll <laughs> which was kind what? of funny yeah Damn. yeah Litten, Litten takes fire moves incredibly well but yeah um, it was pretty funny to me but yeah at this point I just go straight back at Abra it, it doesn't really matter what I go into here because uh, I can just stall out your turns. Because uh, obviously when I have three mons, I can just keep switching and cause you problems. Uh, True. But yeah, like at this point, I'm pretty sure I was just like, I just go back into Abra and win. Uh, I feel yeah, like... Easy play, uh, you know? Wait, I, went, I actually forgot how this... Well, I, I remember how it happened, but I forgot what happened here. I'm pretty sure this was when you clicked Sucker Punch and I face bombed. Well, I, I couldn't have, though. No, you, still... Oh, oh no, you I'm... sacked Machop to get this, why? and then to go back well. So I'm not sure why you did this, but I, I'm pretty sure this was debate me, because then you click Sucker Punch here. This was the turn you click Sucker Punch. And I, I was completely confused, yeah. I was so bamboozled by this. Like, I had no idea this thing got Sucker Punch. But at the same time, even losing Abra didn't matter here, because I can just go bud you, sack that off, go Magnemite. Because at this point, like, yes, your weather ball kills Buddy, but uh, your sun's out and then Magnemite outspeeds. So, this was how this worked out. And I, I knew that going into this. So, I was just like, okay, whatever. At this point, you're actually in range for a flash cannon to kill. But because rocks were up, I had to sack Buddy first. Uh, so, the thing is, this if I wasn't dumb and I didn't switch and I used Sucker Punch there, I had two turns left, I would have 
weather ball twice in one, but I was stupid. Why did you I switch? You could have done, stupid. yeah. It, but then wow. again, that was still a risky decision. Because uh, yeah. if I went back into Arbor and killed it then, and then had Mag as my last Pokemon, I could still stall you out. So. Yeah, but it, yeah, it was it was a big risk, but it was a it was a better risk to do that. Yeah, absolutely. It was your battle play, but to be fair, there was no way realistically in the battle after how hard this battle was that either one of us were going to make 100% correct plays here. Like, yeah. It was, and to be fair, we both only noticed that after the game. Uh, I think you only mentioned it um, at the start of game 3 in your video. But yeah, as you can see, I hidden powered here. I could be either hidden power fire or hidden power ice. You, s you wouldn't have known which one at the time. Obviously, you know afterwards, after the fact, uh, it's actually Hidden Power Fire, uh, but it was to take advantage of your son, <laughs> which is I thought was kind of clever at the time. But yeah, that's going to be, of course, Game 2. Uh, so we are currently 1-1, one and one, heading into the Epic Game 3. Uh, <laughs> and of course, so that's going to be done in a separate video. So thanks, Exo, for joining me as always. Hey, no problem, dude. And we're going to get on out of here. My name is Rabombi Teacher, I'm your coach of the robot with Rabombies. Stay safe, stay awesome, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.